Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Movies Are Real for March 2024. I am George. I'm here with Ryan Lance. That is what people say. Mm -hmm. Harry Lyles. That was so natural, right? With the House of Wax shirt, you know? House of Wax. That is a film. Represent. Yeah. Um, welcome to Movies Are Real. We talk about the movies of the month prior and what we're looking forward to the next month. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our best of discussions. It was, uh, I did not see Saw X just sweeping, just <laughs> right, wiping the floor with the, with motion pictures of, uh, of last year. And when the next Saw movie comes out next year, it's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. What do you mean next year? Got delayed. Isn't it, isn't it in 2025? No. Well. That's just how I'm learning this. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Little years around. We're, gonna, we're packing it up, folks. This is it. <laughs> we're going to come back in 2025. Um, that checks out, though, because uh, I was I thought that was pretty ambitious. That, the, mm -hmm. that, that they were like, next year. So you knew you were going to make another one, which I don't. Maybe they were thinking of the old days where you could just spit out a Saw movie. It's Halloween. Um, so that means Saw. Yeah. 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 But then, like, oh, we tried on this last one. Maybe we should try. People's again. expectations are high now. Yeah. We should probably. Tr okay, well, damn. I'm uh, sorry, George. <laughs> guess, guess the Crow re reboot's gonna have to bring in all the money for Lionsgate. The Crow, baby. I saw a trailer for that the other day. And I was like, huh. Yeah, that's a film. I've never seen the original, but I thought the the song choice for yeah. the trailer was the, insane. The song choice is not. It should be like 2000s emo. Not since the Robocop opinion. remake have I been as. Confused by a, re a reboot. Uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, March. Uh, there's one movie that at the start of March everyone was talking about, and now at the end of March, and actually we're recording this in April, I have a hard time remembering, folks, and that's <laughs> Dune Part 2. The sequel to Denny Bell News 2021? Or 2020? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember when was the max every movie. Was that in 2020? That was 2021 because okay. mm -hmm. they tried to bring it back. Because at the end of 2020, mm -hmm. they did a Wonder Woman You're right. for Christmas. And we were like, man. And we're like, whoa, a Wonder Woman movie for Christmas? I'm like, oh. I feel like in a few no. years, I forget about that movie. And I feel like I see moments and I'm like, what? <laughs> what a fucking nonsense. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways, Dune Part 2. Uh, not as not as bad as uh not as bad at all but you know not not i would not compare it to wonder woman 1984 it is a better movie than that so good job nice. denny <laughs> um so yes yeah, so this is the second part uh in this one we actually see timothy and zendaya become all kissy kissy and timothy is on his way to becoming uh the the guy who's gonna help the fremen uh stand up to the harkonnen uh and he's gonna get revenge for his daddy his very attractive dad uh man he looks i watched doom part one again <laughs> fucking god damn <laughs> dude oscar isaac um and so yeah we have we have all the stars in the world in this motion picture yeah. jesus fucking christ <laughs> um so yeah where do we start with that let's start with the person who is the person most positive on dune part two i feel like we are the most lukewarm on this film <laughs> yeah i feel like all of us are like that's a good well-made film yeah Anyways, moving on to the yeah, next subject. Yeah, I don't have any passion for Dune. I, I wish I was, because, you know, I, I read the people who are, like, really passionate about it. Yeah. And I, and I like... Yeah, I they're like, crazy about it. And I like, like, I like sci-fi stuff. Like, I like the idea of it, but it's so rare that one comes on, along that I'm like, whoa, that's super cool. And I was hoping with this one that'd be... That would happen, but instead, just the same was like, oh, I hate this stupid sand plant. This planet sucks. What do you mean every single book takes place on this yeah. planet? That's horrible. What a horrible place. Again, watching Doom Part 1 and they're on planet the uh, Atreides planet. And I think it's shot in some... I think it's I think it's Ireland, but I don't know. But like the cliffside, and it looks very pretty. And I'm like, oh, we gotta go to this fucking sand planet. Um, yeah, Kara, you also... Uh, is a film. Yeah, I'm just kind of... Just kind of whatever on Dune 2. It's a... <laughs> yeah. Check it out. A fine film. Um... Yeah, I think my main thing I, was, I, don't, I don't think anyone comes to us for Dune no. discussion. I think the main thing, like leaving it, that I was surprised is like, like everyone kind of sucks. Yes, and yeah, there's like, no one to really root for. In yeah, this movie. and like I thought maybe when I watched original Dune and didn't remember what happened in it, um, mm -hmm. I just assumed because Kyle MacLaughlin is great and like plays the nicest man on the planet in Twin Peaks. Mm -hmm. That, you know, a Paul Atreides was, like, a good guy. He was a good liberator. But, like, in this one, he's just, like, an asshole. 
Do you remember if he was as like no? In, in the in first one, one, David Lynch very much played it like I don't know by his choice or whose choice was like no, he is a good guy. Okay. He is a good guy. Like we love that he's gonna lead us to war. Yes. That's cool. We all love him. We love that he taught us all the Kamehameha wave. Exactly. Like, all of these words. <laughs> um so yeah, yeah that was, that was not, my not that was it. my biggest surprise is like huh this guy kind of sucks interesting you tell me the god emperor of dune is a bad guy <laughs> he's just a little mouse he's just he's a little, little, little mouse. mouse little mouse um yeah so I, I yeah i feel the same way i think um it's awesome i think it's cool as hell that so many people are having such a strong reaction to this High concept is sci-fi movie. I mean, it's it's kind of Star Wars, but you know, it's it's a new thing for a lot of people, and it's a long movie, and it's shot incredibly not traditional. Like it, it looks gorgeous. Um, it, it's not it's not a I would not describe it as a normal movie. It is a uh, it's got some fun ideas, but uh, yeah, I, I just don't. I think I I don't. It, it, it comes to for me it comes to timothy as paul atreides i'm like i don't care about this main character i don't believe the relationship with him and zendaya um javier bardem is having a great time i love mm. that that good that's pretty good um i don't care about the about Har the harkin it well actually that's true i like batista just fucking smashed that guy's head that's pretty good he's, that's pretty well good. that's batista yeah that was pretty, he's just playing batista that, that wasn't in the that script was just, <laughs> he's just, just gonna power bomb him um <laughs> But yeah, that's my biggest thing. I'm not, I was not emotionally connected to any of the narrative beats in here. I was just looking at the the picture, the pretty images, and I was like, I'm kind of kind of done. But all that being said, like I am so so like for like more Dune movies, just because like they're so pretty and so well made. As I understand, they get weirder. So and it, that's sure. another thing. I I know at one point someone fuses. I know there a cover of one is like I think it's a, a his Dune. Son. A dune worm has like a man yeah, face, yeah. and like one of his sons fused with the yeah, worm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta see that. <laughs> I gotta see that. That is something that I need to see in my life. I I doubt Denis will do that one. They'll probably move it down to like Brett Ratner. But even so, That'd be pretty. Exciting. I would love a Brett Ratner doing movie, and I think <laughs> oh, I they Brett Ratner did some bad shit. I think oh yeah, so. I think one hundred percent. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, but then again, I watched him, but again, I was like, I don't know. I did, I like Timothy Chalamet. I don't know what it is him in this character. He's got no personality. And Kyle McLaughlin, other than being Kyle McLaughlin, it's sort of the same thing with the other one. Other than he was really, um, silly in there. <laughs> uh, a dog. Yeah, his little dog. Like, I could tell from your steps or something, whatever the hell. So that's all you guys have to do, and we think it's all right. Uh, I think that'll be the last time we talk since, about Dune. It's not not me, but sincerely, people in this podcast have much stronger feelings about the next movie, Imaginary, <laughs> uh, from Blumhouse, and uh, no one of consequence in this movie, I don't think. Right? Uh, the lady who plays the like I have spent my life uh -huh. <laughs> learning about imaginary friends <clears throat> is also the lady who is the therapist in Split, which I thought was very funny. I thought about Split in a <laughs> I was like, this lady just is a therapist for weird knee shit. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of Anya Tyler Joy in my feed for some reason, because people really like her, and it remind. Also, she's in Dune. Spoilers. Um, and it reminded me how like I was like I've been thinking like she was in Split. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. That was like her second yeah. big thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, huh. After The Witch, I Interesting. Think. Yeah. Much to think about. Anyways, Imaginary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a new Blumhouse movie where uh, we have a, little, a girl with a little bear. And his name is... Chauncey. Well, Chauncey. I was going to say Chauncey. Toby. But that's Toby. Enough. That's no, a, that's the demon <laughs> yeah, in Paranormal yeah, Activity. Yep. Oh, I know, right. I know. <laughs> a much better guy. film. This well, you know. <laughs> 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 um so yes we, we have a uh, the our lead character here is a woman who is a uh children's book uh author and artist um i don't know what the hell the, the husband does other than he's a musician remember you're right he he's a musician to go on tour yeah they go on tour yes Jason Mraz -ass yes <laughs> yes. Five outfit. yes yes and so they, they got a house um he has his he has a family from a previous relationship uh, they're trying to make it work. She's the stepmom that came in, and you know the 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 teenage daughter's like, Bleh! "Fuck you!" And she's trying to connect with the youngest, who um has made friends with Chauncey, um who's a real bear. He's a real bear. He's a real guy. Carrie, what are your thoughts on this film? Uh, I thought this movie was hilarious. <laughs> I love things that are about little bears. I love uh, Blumhouse movies that are just crazy and stupid. <laughs> it's, 
It's this this tier of like shit show horror movie is like my favorite thing in the whole world. And it made me very happy. And uh it was funny. And uh I have a little bear who I had bought right before going to see this movie and he didn't have a name and then I watched this movie and now that bear's name is Chauncey. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I, I think what I what I respect with this movie is it, it becomes, like, one of the fun Blumhouse movies, like, very late in the game. But, like, at that point, it, like, dives, like, fully into that, like, wackiness that, like, this this podcast is a huge fan of. And I just respect, like, how far, like, they went into, like, this very different direction um, that, because uh, it very well could have just been a normal, like, invisible, creepy um imaginary friend you know light spoilers i guess but it goes in a in a different different area from that um and that is very admirable and uh, it's it's up to the viewer whether it works or not but i think for us it did in fact in the in the way that it was for y'all if not, speak for yourself if nothing if not entertaining i would say like again is this a good movie i yes. don't think so but <laughs> it's it is certainly entertaining from like the the twists and like the bizarre stuff in that third act. My thing with this movie is that it just it's just too long. I was okay. on board, but then it just refuses to end, and it's just like, what the fuck? Let me free. Um, uh, so yeah, I was having a pretty good time until I was it, it still wouldn't end. Uh, so my makeup plan was it could have been twenty minutes shorter. Uh, but other than that, I don't have too much against it. My favorite part was the fucking dickhead ass boy next door, uh, who's like, "You want to do fucking drugs?" Oh right, uh, I forgot about him. Yeah. So he stole over himself. <laughs> I love the idea of going over to like a girl's house and then just you do drugs and wander <laughs> her house <laughs> without her while she's just watching TV. That's very funny. <laughs> That's a, um, that's a fun move. And of course, I like the lady who was like, I study imaginary <laughs> friends. And... Oh, yeah, they kept being like, <laughs> like Bing Bong, and then she's like, his name uh, is not Bing, Bing Bong. Bong. Yeah. It's Chauncey. <laughs> man, I... And I was like, man, that's a movie that has a lot bigger cultural imprint with a lot younger people. A lot, a lot of people that are not me because I was like, oh, yeah, I guess. I think Inside that, must, out. <laughs> that sure. must have come out like... I th- that came out like right as like we were like getting a little too yeah, to yes. like get like... So for a lot of people, that, that movie means a lot. <laughs> yeah. George, I just want you to know that every single time I think of the character Bing Bong, I think of the time when you were recounting to us how you watched an Alamo thing that was like top saddest Pixar <laughs> moments or whatever the fuck and one of them was Bing Bong and you just went... Fuck Bing Bong! <laughs> think about that all the time. He sucks, man. <laughs> Every time I think about Bing Bong, I think about that. So Fucking now I can't be sad about that ass scene ever shit, again. bro. Fuck uh, Bing Bong. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know if there's anything else to say about Imaginary, really. Um, not as good as Night Swim, in my opinion. Because Night Swim, oh, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. I, I, I just bought my Blu-ray of Night Swim. Nice. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> But I will be also buying Imaginary. I think they're I think they're both very fun. I think Imaginary's a little more like Night Swim's a little more standard and we got the crazy performance from Wyatt Russell and oh, then yeah. Imaginary's just a little like, what is fucking going on? There one are, is about a haunted pool, Carrie. I let I, you that's know. That's pretty true. That's pretty true. Well one's about a silly little bear. Mm. <laughs> they're both they're both part of the fun uh, Blubhouse diagram, yeah. and, um, uh, as opposed to like the miserable stuff that is, right. you yeah. know. And I'd rather Freddy's I'd rather watch Exorcist. either of them than watch Megan. And I'll just say that right now. And that is true. That is true. <laughs> Megan can learn a lot from the imaginary. <laughs> I can't. I, I can't go with you there, but I. But I. It's you how know. I feel. Yeah. If not, Megan I, went into a haunted pool, you would be the <laughs> first one to say hell yeah. All right, George. So don't even get, don't even get me started. Okay, <laughs> against the haunted pool movie. It's the bear movie we have a problem with. <laughs> anyway, this fucking guy hates bear movies. <laughs> Love Lies Bleeding, directed by Rose Glass, starring Kirsten Stewart and Katie O'Brien and Ed Harris, Dave Franco. Um, so yes, this is uh, the movie where uh, Kirsten Stewart is and this little buff, uh, not little, big buff lady have a little fling, and I didn't see this movie, so that's all I know, and they get into some mischief, and I haven't seen it yet somehow, and it's only going to play on Alamo, 
So Ryan, what would you think of this film? Uh, as 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 people might assume, I mm. loved this. This was great. I cannot wait to rewatch it um, again. It just feels such like an authentic like crime thriller from the eighties. Um, I probably just, love it. Just with all of the <laughs> like like just like the the muscle culture of that era is like so specific, and it like really nails that super well. And that's such a big part of like a one of one of the characters main arcs in the film and then also you have you know the Kristen stewart side which is this kind of um you know crime thriller thing that involves like her dad who is in some sh- in some shady business and you know these worlds kind of crossing over when these two characters you know meet and fall in love and it's great it's you know it's a great like natural feeling relationship between the two of them uh the the thriller stuff is very fun and good and if you're a fan of saint Maud and it's, oh. and it's bold endings this movie has an absolutely <laughs> insane wonderful beautiful ending that like i think about a lot and it just makes me you know want to rewatch it again and again and i know that, that will happen once i own this on blu-ray someday but incredible i think i'm gonna be ranking it higher next time i see it for sure but one of one of the best things of the year in my opinion i think it's still playing at our at another theater but maybe i'll watch it still but carrie yes. what'd you think of yeah. love lies bleeding i agree with ryan it's yes a masterpiece. it's I, so I good. really liked it the Kristen Stewart's really good. I really liked the muscle builder, Katie, Katie oh, O'Brien. Katie O'Brien, yeah, yeah. I really liked her. She was really good. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of intensity and a lot of yuckiness, which I needed. Yes. And it's like, not not all of the yuckiness is just from like straightforward violence. A lot of it is just like, building muscle is kind of... Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's striations. Yeah. Steroids, a a, of... steroids is a big aspect of this, oh. and um, some of the steroid... Laniness. Like, yeah, there'll is be like, like, like drug trip sequences, but she's taking steroids, and like her muscles are bulging in their veins and the sounds, and it's like, yeah. ew. As, as, <laughs> as not workout people who don't see muscles usually, I think me and Carrie were like, oh, oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> Is your, is your, is your, is your skin going to hang, hang, hang on there? Is it going to burst? I don't know. I don't uh, think so. I yeah. can't do that either, actually. <laughs> Yucky. How's the soundtrack on this? It was good. I yeah. remember hearing some some great pulsing and some great okay. yes. some good songs. Yes. So. How's Ed Harris? Oh, he's a Oh, he's disgusting. Oh, my God. <laughs> he does... There, there was one disgusting thing that Ed Harris does in this movie that probably I almost could have thrown up if it was oh. on a worse day. <laughs> Uh, Dave Franco's in this. That's, a, that's Dave Franco. What happened to him? Where did he disappear to? Um, he started doing some like light directing. Oh. Um, because I know he directed um the movie The Rental, which was completely oh fine. yes, I remember. I was talking and about I believe this. he rent he directed another movie that his wife was in um like last year or the year before that. I'm not sure. But I think he's trying to do more of that. Oh. But he's pretty good in this movie. He's really only in the first um, first act. But, you know, his character is gross and slimy and has a <laughs> goofy little mustache. And it's really perfect for <laughs> our boy Dave Franco. Mm. But yeah, highly recommend this one. Yes. Okay. I'm so excited for whatever Rose Glass does next. Yeah. She, is, she is two for two. The second movie, knocking that out of the park for a new director, that's tough. But <laughs> she just... Whoa! So so pumped for what whatever she does next, mm-hmm. and also pumped to see whatever a Katie, Katie O'Brien, O'Brien does yes, next. Say. She's in Twisters, baby. She's, oh, she's in Twisters. Twisters. She's gonna suplex the Twister she and make is. it leave. <laughs> I really hope Twisters is a fun movie. I have a very high opinion of Twister. I, I need a, I need to rewatch Twister. The original Suck Twister. Zone. I'll I've, do that any day. I have, <laughs> not, I have not seen Twister original Twister since uh first food. Time. Food. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> that's uh, that's the first Philip Seymour Hoffman movie I ever okay. saw, and uh, he, that's a good one. He's, <laughs> he's pretty good in, in movie. it. He's pretty good in it. Um, Love lies bleeding. Uh, Late night with the devil. This was a highly anticipated one from us. Oh, uh, you guys told me the pitch. I never saw trailer. I was like, that sounds incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a movie, uh, a sort of a found footage sort of movie about a late night talk show host and a really wacky night on the job. Um. Yeah, um, very similar to Ghost Watch and uh, 
There's probably some other movies I can't think of right now. Um, but yeah, Carrie, what'd you think of this? Uh, I thought this movie was awesome. I am a big Ghost Watch fan, so I had high expectations going in, and I really like David Dismalkian, so I was excited to see him as the lead lead role. And yeah, this movie's cool. It's about <coughs> this guy who is a late night host, and his ratings they're going down. Yeah, he's and, up against uh, Johnny Carson, which oh, is uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. which would have been a tough uh, thing to do at that time. And uh, I believe it is Sweeps Week. Yeah, <laughs> during, Sweeps Week during the film. I hear Sweeps Week a lot. Me too. In film, <laughs> and I don't, don't understand yep. what <laughs> it is. <laughs> or like, it's like this is the what? Like our family's like, we gotta watch the news this one week. It Sweeps Week. <laughs> My, I told Ryan this when we were leaving the theater. My main association with the phrase sweeps week is from Bruce Almighty. <laughs> where, because he's, it's sweeps week during that movie and he's a news anchor, if you remember. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. a part where he's trying to get to the station on time, but he's stuck in traffic. And he's like, not during sweeps week. And then he starts <laughs> bouncing around in his car. He's like, not during sweeps week. <laughs> That's all I haven't thought about Bruce Almighty in a long time. <laughs> Um, it used to be my favorite movie when I was a kid. I liked it a lot as a kid. Um, but yes, uh, and stuff goes wacky. He's gonna go to some crazy lengths to get those ratings. Um, specifically, bring someone who is an exorcist and their possessed uh, client. Uh, what do you call uh, somebody who? Yeah, I think she was like a therapist. She's therapist? like a she's like a therapist, and that's like her adopted daughter. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. Uh, she rescued from a, de- a devil cult that yes. all c- killed themselves. Yeah, we're going going on like a tour of the supernatural, and we have the acclaimed uh, cynic skeptic yes. guy yes. in, in house as well. Mm-hmm. And his producer is a slime ball, also. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he also has the. Who's uh Andy? Who's Conan's guy? Andy uh, Andy Richter. Richter. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Andy oh, Richter. Right. I I I really loved the the play with like the Andy Richter sidekick like character because like his his on camera performance is so like oh I'm I'm just a wacky little guy and then Hofker was like I am so worried about this <laughs> this is gonna go really bad and and I really like that I I watched a lot of late night television as a child mm. I watched um. I watched a good amount of, you know, uh, Jay Tony. Leno. I, I I did not like no, Jay Leno. Not. I watched a bit of Letterman. I I liked Conan when he was on the Tonight Show. That obviously did last. Um, and then you know some late night, uh, late 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 with um, Craig Ferguson was mm, always pretty fun. Craig Ferguson's good. He's yeah, he's had cool. a resurgence over the years. I feel people have been um, appreciating him more. And then. Um, I think the late night with Jimmy Fallon was pretty good. It was only until the Tonight Show that he like kind of sold out and yeah. became unseparable. And Seth Meyers, in my opinion, is the he's current, probably the best one right Seth now. Seth Meyers is definitely the best late night traditional late night uh, talk show host uh, working right now. Um, so for for me, like watching all that, I loved how like authentic um, it it showed. You know the programs, um, how those programs go, and you know with monologues and the guests but also trying to do this different spin on with all that i thought that was super genuine and cool and all the backstage stuff was always fun and then when it played with that and changed things towards the end when things got a little more out of hand i just absolutely loved and thought that was so fun and cool and interesting there's some good aspect ratio stuff if you remember this carrie and i'm a sucker for that. That's always really fun. It's not censored, but there it does. It's sound. not. It's not a censor level, no. But nothing. Nothing can be censored, okay? <laughs> but it has. It has a cool moment like that, and I. I just really liked it. I. I respect it a lot, and I'm excited for this other Shutter original to be um, on uh, a Walmart shelf. Um, and I. And I. What I loved the most about this is I recommended this to uh, my sister and her boyfriend. And they watched it, and they are much more of an insidious and. Um, Is that a problem? Well, like they they won't, they won't watch like the like the they won't watch like audition. You know, they won't they won't watch the like messed up one. So they walked out of that, be like, Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> and I love that. That's very good. So, yes, I, I like this a lot. Yeah. It's currently my favorite of the year. I am a hater of this movie, um, but I'm not going to hate on it too much. I don't have the energy. But I think uh, what didn't work for me is it just felt like, how do I say amateur hour being nice? And I don't know how to say it, but that's what it felt like to me. It just felt like they had a... They wanted to. They were. They wanted to tribute for those kinds of uh, movies. A lot of, lot of potential. A lot of potential is what I. Said. But in the, uh, I just, just like, you're not, you're not hitting it. <laughs> the, you're not, you're not committed to the bit enough in terms of uh, the start of the aspect ratio. And like they're doing like, um, because they have the bits that are the footage from the show, and then there are bits that are behind the scenes. But it's shot like a movie. It's not shot yeah. like a document. Like. Some guy just being like, oh, we're here at the, the late night show. We're here's catering. Oh, man. Who, Jimmy ate the cookie again. Isn't that right, Jimmy? <laughs> it's like right in the face. I did not like that. Um, uh, I did not like the exorcist scene. I thought it looked bad. Um, yeah, the worm is awesome. There's a worm in this movie. It's pretty. A lot of worms in this movie. And that's phenomenal. That's my favorite part of the movie. But yeah, uh, overall, I was just I was like, mm, not cutting it for me. And then, of course, there's the controversy controversy that there's, like, AI-generated images for the bits, yeah. which is a bummer. Which, again, to me, again, was like, you know, you don't have the stuff to me. <laughs> I was like, you don't got you don't got it, Junior. Um, so, yeah, that was for me. I was like, it's neat. I'm glad I saw it in a movie theater. I would have disliked it a lot more at home. But watching it in a movie theater made it better. Um, I think the lead actor, what was he, what has he been, has he been in something else? He's been, he's been in a lot of stuff. He was in, he was Polka Dot Man. In oh, the yes, yes, Club. yes, yes. He was in The Boogeyman. <laughs> oh, I didn't see The Boogeyman, so yeah. Uh, Again, I thought you were talking about Boogeyman 2003. Nope, no, 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 no. I, I like his performance <laughs> in um, Prisoners a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, he was in that too. But he, I have, it's been so long since I've seen that He's great movie. and creepy and weird in Prisoners. He's he's a great creepy guy. <laughs> okay. Um, he, he, that what is his freak. role, and he... And and he's really great in this. I I loved seeing him like as the the lead in something. Yeah, I see, I think of him as like a Shutter guy because he mm. shows up. He's he was my favorite talking head on that Shutter hundred day hundred scariest yes. moments oh, countdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great on that, and he's guest judged a couple times on Dracula, which oh. is on Shutter now, and he's always fantastic as a Dracula guest judge. I saw his uh, four favorite letterboxed ones. I can't remember what they all were, but he was like, <laughs> first off, the, the Muppet, Muppet movie. movie. <laughs> it's like this guy gets <laughs> it. Yeah, I don't remember what his other ones were either. But that was so funny. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I wish I liked it more, but hey. I'm glad a lot of folks uh, really dug it. Um, yeah, Late Night with the Devil. It's definitely worth watching if you... Once it's on Shutter. I don't think it's on Shutter yet. No, I think it hits the 19th. Yeah. That's what I remember. Um, so yeah, boy, hi. We've been going through these movies fast. We talked about Dune. We talked about Imaginary. We talked about Love Lies Bleeding. We talked about Late Night with the Devil. And now we're talking about Immaculate, baby. Sydney Sweeney. The most... If you were to believe in psyops, there's something about... No one has been talked about more in the last month, I feel, than this woman. Um, God bless her. I have no problem with her. Um, but yeah, they, they she produced uh, this this spooky nun movie uh, with a director that she did um, an erotic thriller with that went on Amazon. I love erotic thrillers, and I saw a trailer of it, and I was like, oh, I don't know, man. But um, well, love's a strong word, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But it, again, it was a sort of like uh, I don't know if you got it. And at the time when I watched this movie, you're like, that was a fine movie. But then there was a, there's a movie that we can't talk about this episode, I guess. That I was, I was like. Ah, that's how you that's, do it. That's, how, you do it. <laughs> that's how you're supposed to do that. Um, but, but immaculate. Uh, so yeah, Sydney Sweeney is an um, she's American, right? She's an American mm -hmm. nun who's coming to an Italian. Uh, I don't know what do you call a, a gaggle of nuns. What do you call a, a gaggle? A convent. A convent? But it was like an orphanage. But it was like an yeah, where they were taking. Or am care I getting that confused? You, with the first, first omen? omen? <laughs> yeah. First um, omen completely obliterated all the. Yeah, that's what we're talking. Immaculate. That's what we're talking. I was like. <laughs> Uh, I can't remember, but um, so you, but, but a I, place where a bunch of nuns would hang out. Like if you went to the a door, nunnery? a nunnery, <laughs> yes. But they also have a job, and I can't remember if the job is from First Omen or man, this is not a uh -oh. bit. I can't remember. This is not a bit. Okay, so anyway, she comes here, um, uh, and then uh, some weird stuff. Well, no, this isn't a spoiler. She becomes pregnant mm -hmm. out of nowhere, just randomly, like whoa! And everyone's like, "It's a miracle!" Wow! It's an immaculate conception. Wow! Um, and then uh, some weird stuff starts happening. Um, yeah, I'll start off with immaculate. Um, even okay, I'm gonna forget the first the first omen because we're not even gonna talk about this episode. <laughs> so, um, 
I'm not going to mention, but I think uh, this movie is solid. It is totally fine. I think um, the marketing machine went wild with it. And they're just like, we know we can get people butts in seats. It's a fine movie. Like we can get away with hyping it up a lot. Um, and God bless them. Their marketing can't, like, neon fucking worked Truly. <laughs> crazy for this movie. Um, and it wound up just doing respectably fine. It didn't like, I don't think it didn't do anyone but you numbers. Um, yeah. And I think that this, it's, this movie is totally chill. Visually, um, it's a very cool movie. <laughs> I just like like this. I think about the last part. I was like, what a chill movie. <laughs> but okay, okay. okay. For genre non exploitation, this is pretty fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I say? Yeah, it's a very cold looking movie, which I wasn't expecting. It's not very. Um, you don't get a lot of. I, I, well, I, I, I think when I think of Italian horror, I think of Giallo movies. And that's definitely not where you're getting here in terms of color, in terms of shots and stuff it's a very cold but it works for this fine um the ending is probably the, the best part mm -hmm. um Sydney Sweeney's fine she's good um this is a completely fine movie I don't know what to tell you yeah. this is like this is acceptable <laughs> I, think, I think it I think it's it the most three stars movie of the year <laughs> yeah. that's true that's true I, the the third act really like sells at home just because the first two feel like just a lot of like talking and waiting and not a lot of nothing really occurring, mm -hmm. at least like that feels like of note. And it's not until like a certain point in the third act where things get going and get pretty wild, pretty quick. And it's all, you know, very fun and interesting um, with with some bold and with a pretty bold ending considering everything. But um I wish it had more going on in that first half um, to really like, you know, just, 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 just have something There's else. There's no suspense in this movie. Yeah. Is thing. It's just like, oh, you're pregnant now. And like, you're like, okay, then the something's There's some up. weird stuff happening, but we don't uh -oh, really. There's yeah. a fucky wucky weird basement in yeah. there. Uh oh. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, oh, but there's another movie, but there's an even fucky wuckier basement. <laughs> and that sucks. <laughs> Uh, it's not fair. It's just not fair. Uh, but, but it is a totally fine movie. Um, yeah, it, it's good for if you want something spooky, but not like, but you can't handle like a late night with the devil. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at like, the same point, I could see people at home maybe finding this a little boring. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of that, I think it's better at a movie theater just because it grabs your attention more. Mm -hmm. And at home, it's just like a. It's like, oh, this is, this is, this is a drama about a nun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carrie, did you have anything to say other than it's fine? Uh, yeah, it's fine. I liked the, I liked the, uh, second trimester. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I walked away to that, Those yeah. were funny. And, uh, yeah, it didn't really pick up for me until the very end, as we've alluded to before. But yeah, I don't really. <laughs> it's a good ending. It's a good. It's fine. It's a good ending. It's an ending that I don't think I would ever. It, it's not worth it enough for me to sit through the rest no, of the movie no, to get no. to yeah. the ending. And I'm the most like I'll watch an entire ass movie for one part that I love. That's very me. But this one, I don't care enough about what it does achieve <laughs> to watch the rest of the boringness. But it's still a good movie. It's just. Didn't quite yeah. take it there. I wish me. it was a little weirder. I wish they yeah. had more characters and more actors who are uh, interesting mm -hmm. uh, and could stand out. Everything's kind of just like, uh, it's fine. And I'm sure that erotic thriller made by them is fine as well. Um, there's a, the next uh, Sydney Sweeney's, what's the next movie she's producing? Um, I, it was of note. I'm going to look it up. But I know she's got, like Margot Robbie, she's got her own production house because she uh, Dang. wants to have more. Uh, I mean, she's just, Maggot was probably cheap. But yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, she wants to have more control about what she's doing. The caretaker, a young woman, accepts a caretaking job on Craigslist and quickly discovers her responsibilities have stakes far greater and more dangerous than she could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this is directed by Michael. This is produced by Michael Bay and Bradley Fuller. Oh, oh wow! What the hell? Of uh, the Purge, Bradley Fuller was the Purge oh, guy. Oh wow! This is gonna be a movie. So yeah, it's gonna Platinum Dunes horror movie starring her, <laughs> uh, but produced by her. Oh, Anyways, uh, immaculate. It's completely <laughs> fine. Check it out. Um, but this movie now, this movie is uh, this movie is exceptional, folks. Problemista, 
directed by Julio Torres, starring Julio Torres, Tilda Swinton, and Riza for like a, a bit, and Greta Lee also for, for a bit, and Isabella Rossellini as a wonderful narrator. Um, yes, this is a new A24 movie. Uh, this is about uh, Julio here, who is an immigrant from uh, El Salvador, who is here on a V, not even a, a work visa, because he wants to work for Hasbro. Mm -hmm. And so he's working a uh, cryo cryogenic <laughs> frozen thing where you freeze yourself vanilla sky style uh and uh then you come up in the future um and uh that's what's getting his work visa and then uh oh he loses the job because he unplugs the thing and now he's got to find someone new and turns out tilda swinton who is uh, an eccentric uh, uh art curator um is his one hope of uh getting it done and this movie is fucking amazing. I love this movie so much. It is so funny. It is so unique in terms of vibe and pacing. And Julio is just so good at just deadpan jokes. I was like, oh no. His own nose is just incredible. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, just his uh, his little funny dainty walk. Uh, uh, just... Uh, Wonderful soundtrack that elevates everything. And then Tilda Swinton is just on another fucking level. If there was ever a doubt that this is one of the best actresses of all time, she is transformative <laughs> as a woman who has five million flashlight apps on her goddamn iPhone. Just, that was that that my favorite thing. <laughs> that they say here. Every, she has her photo all the time, and the flash is literally she, always she on. She always has to charge her phone. But then she doesn't notice. She like notices finally at the very end because she turns her photo. She's like, wait a minute. <laughs> and then she shuts it off. Like, and That's why she's always going to charge her Holy phone, hell. folks. Just uh, she's so, perfect. so much subtle <laughs> jokes. And it's just, again, I didn't. I guess I haven't seen any comedic stuff with Tilda. I mean, she, I mean, Wes Anderson's on the. It's on the periphery. It's definitely dead fan. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hickenlooper is, you know, a little, a little silly, but this is just like, man, just, she's just incredible. Just in, unbelievable. She's so funny. She's just, again, I didn't even know it was her for the longest <laughs> time. Um, and it's just, just crazy. Just so many good, good widgets. Uh, FileMaker Pro. Oh my God. Uh, I think I told Carrie this, but for my last job, I used FileMaker Pro a lot. <laughs> um, and see, see, my, my life story projected <laughs> on cinema for the first time. Just like, it's, really. It's good to be seen in art, you know? It, 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 <laughs> incredible. That, that just made me think, because Ryan told me that, and I was like, oh, that's a real thing. I have no idea. That's just not a part of my life. But it made me think of in Booksmart when the pizza delivery guy was like, why would you order two half beef, half cheese pizzas and not just one cheese? That was the most seen I had ever felt about my job in a film. So I'm glad you got to Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so it would be like, no one knows FileMaker Pro. <laughs> yeah. It's just incredible. Uh, yeah, Carrie and, or Ryan, I don't know who you And just like, go. like part of that is like what I what I respect at this movie is like it talks about like the world and like such a like he wants to work at Hasbro and they kind of shit on Hasbro and like they just say Hasbro. They're they not do. they're not like big toy no, company. It's just and like that just like makes everything like land really, mm -hmm. really well for me. Just Bank like, of America, Bank, Bank of America, <laughs> exactly. Like it just, it just like so, like other movies like try to like dance around that with like, you know, parallels. Like we all know what this really is, but like just saying it just really <clears throat> is so good, yeah. and I love it so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carrie, what'd you yeah, think of? I agree with that. It's like such a genuine and honest movie. I love it so much. And I didn't realize until we were watching the like pre-roll stuff that the star also directed it. And we were seeing some of his uh, other comedy bits that he did, like the thing with the little shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just, And it's so great to see that and then to see the movie and see how clear his specific point of view and comedic voice comes through in the movie. And I really love stuff like that. And I love, it's got a lot of surreal, weird, kind of, what's the word? Like, like fun realism, but mm -hmm. surreal. Yeah. Um, Magical realism? Yes, thank you. It's got a lot of that, and I it really... It has a lot of it, and it's I really, wonderful. really loved this movie. Because um, I remember yeah. seeing the trailers before it got delayed, and I was like, oh, that's going to be a banger. And then it got delayed, and it was such a good, such a relief to finally see it and have it live up to all my hype. 
Yeah, uh, this movie is produced also by Emma Stone. Emma worked with him on... Uh, he, was, he was a writer in SNL, I guess. Yes. He did yes. some stuff for when I, she was on it. Yes. Um, I didn't know that he was a writer in SNL, and I found out through the press that he made... He wrote one of my favorite sketches ever. I, I told Carrie this, but the sketch is for... A Fisher Price product called Wells for Boys. Yes. It's it's yeah, a well yeah. for sensitive little boys. Yes. And like it's so funny. And my favorite line in it is another boy walks up to the boy who's looked at the well. He's like, That's stupid. I don't get it. Emma Stone just deadpan walks up. He's like, That's because it's not for you. Everything's for you, and this one thing is for him. So And like that's so funny. And just, That's so good. And just knowing Emma Stone's like type of humor, I was like, man, you two need to work because, uh, mm. yeah, this is this is the stuff. Um, but yeah, what else? I, I think this movie just has a. It just it's just totally. It has the spice. It does, but it's like the spice of this of Julio, this director, like just like again the magical the magical realism, the soundtrack that is like big, uh, but it. Again, it just makes every day moments in this uh, story. I mean, the story is fantastical, but it just it just elevates everything so much. Um, and I love also like uh, there's moments I, I didn't get like I mean I got like it's an immigrant story also, but it's just a every one story at the end because like your problem needs because like he has a moment where like oh yeah you can work at this this clerk office actually you know yeah you know Spanish right like yeah you can work here and we'll sell your visa it's fine <laughs> and he doesn't which is uh because uh in problemista it like. It's, it, it's, everyone in some point chooses to maybe go for a dream, whether that be like, I have this dream job of doing fucking whatever. I don't know. I want to be a marine biologist or whatever the hell. And then there's all these, okay, well, you could have just gotten the fucking easy job of working at a goddamn office. Maybe that's harder for, but like there are, you chose hard shit and uh, this is, this is what you get because you wanted to make toys for Hasbro and whatever the hell. Um, it's some sort of a, anybody can relate to it a little bit, I think. Um. Yeah, man, this movie's great. It's my favorite movie of the year. Uh, it's so good, and I'm so mad we didn't get the Alamo because they they recorded a uh, like don't talk in text bits uh, with Tilda and Julio oh. that were not that were not on it, and so it was just Julio di like directing Tilda to do some uh, improv. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, so like right now, so so you're asking somebody to please don't text, but there's also a bird in the theater and you're scared of the bird, but you also want to tell this person to not talk in text. And it's just like, oh my God. And it's just, it's just, it's impressive to see, um, again, when Tilda, like, like I'm going to get you to direct me. And, uh, and she's just on, she's just, I'm, I'm in for whatever nonsense this is. Uh, it's so good. Um, but yeah, probably missed I found after this that uh, Julio made a show called El Spookies. Yes, on um, HBO. Yes, and I had gone through like I'd gone through like El Spookies. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem like a. I'm pretty sure Spookies is not the Spanish. Oh yeah, no, the lo Spanish. I think it's Los Spookies. Spookies is what it is. Um, but now that I know that he made that, I'm like, I think I should probably watch yeah. that because that's probably very, very funny and underrated. Because I don't think this did particularly No, well. this is not. I don't know. I don't think what 24 is, marketed it this. I don't know what's lot. going on at A24. Uh, I, part of me is wondering that if Civil War doesn't do incredibly where, well, we might have some problems. But at the same time, they also did. They had. Um, they did Love Lives Bleeding. Which they did do Love Lives Bleeding, which did all right. But. Um, they did uh do, 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 sexy beast director. Uh, oh, zone of interest. They did zone of interest, uh, but that was like a critical darling. But uh, they've had a lot of movies that have just done okay. Uh, but marketing machines not work, working as hard as it used to. Yeah, uh, neon machine is a lot more honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, I don't know what what's all that about. But yeah, this movie is just kind of. It felt like. Um, it's okay if this movie doesn't do well be that well because we have a a rights deal with Hulu and or HBO and that'll pay for it in a bulk deal. You'll get to make your movie Julio and we'll put it out and it's good. And I, I'm thinking of more than like as I work in video games and I think a lot of video game publishers work with that. Where it's like we'll give you a budget to do your thing. We won't market it that much, but it's okay because it already got paid for. We have a deal with this subscription service, so all our games are like bought in a bulk mm -hmm. so that's fine and hey he made his movie i just want more people to give him more shit because he's fucking awesome I or at least he's a writer if he just i if he's just a writer i mean i'll be sad for him but he's he's got the stuff 
It's so funny. I, I think when this hits streaming, it'll definitely get more love. I hope so. I, I can I can picture so many moments that will be reaction things and gifts and whatever, so that all The A two four podcast with uh, him and Emma Stone was also very Ooh. good where they talked about that skit that skit and oh. one they didn't get to do about some lady who could like feel spoons or some nonsense, and it, oh, that sounds about right. Um, yeah, and uh, he, what what movie was he like? His, his direction was like you're Nicole Kidman, and oh my god, I forgot what movie it was. Anyways, but it was very good. Um, but yeah, anyways, Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Christ. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Uh, new Ghostbusters movie. Let me tell you, folks. Here's a fucked up thing. What if it snowed in July, baby? That's crazy. What? That's uh, insane. What? Ryan, What's... Ghostbusters. Frozen. I'm the only one. I wanted to watch this. Oh, I man. didn't want to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's an. It's another Ghostbusters. The Ghostbusters are the new Ghostbusters, which is two children, Paul Rudd and the mom. Um, and a shit ton of characters, side characters, I understand. So many, I'll get to that. But okay. they're doing ghost busting, and the city, who I guess is the mayor's assistant, is now the real mayor's like, I fucking hate these ghost busters. All right, get the, them out the of ecologist, here. Ecologist, yeah. ecologist guy. Oh, the man with no dick. No, the man with yeah, no dick. Yeah, the man with no dick, <laughs> sure. Um, and, and then they find out uh, Camille Nanjiani just ran was like, I found this weird orb. Can you uh, like look at it? And then like later you found out there's like this that uh Dan Aykroyd has built this entire underground ghost researching warehouse that's and they had this fucking long ass Marvel ass like this is Shield headquarters where all the we have ghosts trapped in here, they're all doing their <laughs> thing. Um and this orb is real weird. Um, and then the orb has, like, the spirit of, like, the ultimate ghost, and it breaks out and busts out all the ghosts that they've ever caught in the history of Ghostbusters. <sighs> and it's up to the Ghostbusters to save it. And by the end of the movie, there are 12 Ghostbusters, and they all tr are begging to have screen time. And it is absolutely an unfunny mess of a movie. It is no one's having fun. No one's really getting the chance to, like, develop any real arc. Of, apart from, like, the main girl who's played by McKenna Grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who I feel like we all like because she's... She's great. Because she's, she's the Warren's uh, daughter in that yeah, one movie. She, she's in a Where's lot of... That? She's played a lot of, like, creepy girls cool in, like, scary, yeah. in, like, scary movies. So, and, and, like, I'm glad that she's getting more mainstream you know attention because she's she's, she's, she's she's got a nice tiktok following as she's, I she's very good for such a young actress uh it just sucks that this is her most known thing um but it's just it's just not funny or like interesting because it's trying to be like a big summer blockbuster movie and then like it's treated as if this is how ghostbusters always was and like no they weren't they're like the the bit of ghostbusters were like they're these scientists who want to like research ghosts and by the end of it they're just rat catchers basically that's the bit but in this one they're all like oh we have our our drone catcher things and we all are <clears> big <throat> laser things and blah 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 and there's a million characters and there's two times where it's like revealed that bill murray is there and it's like there's a pause for an applause and it's like you can't do that twice <laughs> you can't do that if if Tobey Maguire showed up again, why would you pause again for like, oh my god, like he's a back? Sitcom. Woo! <laughs> and it's it's just exhausting, and everyone's so fucking old, um, <laughs> and like ageist. I, true, <laughs> I am, <laughs> and it's just it's just not a fun movie. I and and I don't get what it's who it's for, because like if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, this isn't it, unless you have such a shallow like you haven't you just remember ghostbusters and you've never rewatched it to like understand what type of movie it really is and like it's nothing it's just a nothing thing for no one i don't I, i'm just baffled by it slimer shows up and like the bit is like he's back in all of finn wolfhart who you think would be the most famous of like the younger people and you would have the most to do with because he's in it and Stranger Things, two of the most popular things in the last, like, five years. And yet his whole arc is, I gotta catch Slimer. I didn't. Yay, I, I have my driver's license. <laughs> it's it's so, it's, it, like, it, 
it's trying to give people an arc, but like they don't have enough time. So it's like, I want to do this thing. And then later on, it's like, I did it with no, with nothing in between. It's, and that's because there's 12 fucking characters. Um, and it's, oh, it's just miserable. Is it better than Afterlife? Because I think I it might get, be. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Well, Afterlife felt more focused on like at least the the core four people. Sure. But like this is trying to juggle everyone else too. Because well. it's trying to make characters when the old people don't want to make Ghostbusters movies anymore. Yes. They, none of them want to be. Yeah. In, like Bill Murray clearly does not want to be there because he has two seeds, which could have just been filled with him on a separate day because he's pretty much just have has his own shot basically um yeah i don't know what to say it's it's not good i don't know who it's for ghostbusters fans i guess i guess so a lot but, of like, but like my parents are ghostbusters fans and they didn't like it yeah my mom didn't really like it yeah <laughs> yeah my dad said it was terrible wow he said it wasn't funny and he and he regretted seeing it. Wow. I was looking for Very the, the negative text thoughts. my mom sent me. She said, Ghostbusters was okay, but not that great. You're not missing anything by not seeing it. Or, like the, the flat, the flat oh. smile. And I think I put this in, like what made me like annoyed is there were some people leaving the theater who like really loved it because I was waiting for family in the bathroom. And like one, one bit in this movie is like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. There's like all these little ones running mm -hmm. around. Mm-hmm. Not explained. They just they're just around. There's they were little, the last one though. Also. The little ones? Yeah. I don't remember they this. They were at in all. Walmart. I didn't see it. I don't remember this. But now they're just like <laughs> everywhere. I believe and, you. And like as I was leaving, like I heard like three different people like, those little marshmallow guys were so funny and cute. And it's like, oh my god, we're 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 so dumb. As a society, we're so dumb. We get so we're so entranced by like the smallest thing in life. Come that on, was, Ryan. It's it hard was, out there. It was created by a studio to <laughs> Let be... Let like the marshmallow It guys. was created... It's so... It, it's just manufactured cuteness that's like... Like, like Bing Bong, I get what you're like, saying. Uh, no, 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 no. Bing <laughs> Bong's fine. I have no problems with Bing Bong. How do you feel about Porgs, Ryan? Porgs are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Porgs are great. What are you talking about? I'm Porgs just are saying, awesome. Different strokes for different folks, Ryan. Listen, it's but this is just like the epitome of that where they just exist for that and they're nothing. And it just sucks. Everything it sucks. Stinks. And oh, no. and you know and and I hate the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Ghostbusters are terrible. These new movies make the first one suck more. That's how damn, bad they damn. are. They're just miserable films for no one. Anyways, Jesus. Kong X Godzilla: The New Empire. <laughs> Woo! Um. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, I don't know who this is for anymore. Uh, this is the <laughs> this is oh, the fifth, fifth legend. yes, God. fifth legendary monster film. Uh, and that's boy, does it feel like it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, I was not a fan. I don't. Uh, I don't know how I, of Godzilla vs Kong. Right, let's start there. Well, I wasn't a fan of Godzilla vs Kong. I love king of the monsters and my biggest thing because i know i'm the most negative person here and y'all were king of the monsters haters and y'all do you like this movie better than king of the monsters uh, no i don't remember king of the monsters very much okay so, well that's fine I think king of the monsters like i think it's problem was it had too many like people all trying to have like bits but like the monster stuff was all great and they all like were unique and interesting and had fun visual stuff. I get that Dan Stevens is in this movie and we <laughs> like him. Yes. But that do. other gentleman, the podcast guy, not to be confused with podcast in Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, which is Ooh. the name of a character in Ghostbusters Frozen yes. Empire. He's one of podcast. the Ghostbusters. Yes, podcast. Um they also have their bits, but I guess it's not a guy going like, oh my god, and they go with like, Zilla. Yeah. I guess it's not that. Anyways. Kong Cross Godzilla the New Empire. I thought we were not gonna have any more of these, but I guess Toho. I guess they made enough movie that they gave Toho, uh, Toho gave Warner Brothers the license again. Because uh, the sick. I, I think Godzilla versus Kong did way better than, than they expected. expected. Yeah. So they're like because King oh, of the Monsters was down. Yeah, like it was like King of the Monsters like was down, and then like there was no like like enthusiasm for and Godzilla, Godzilla Kong, Kong did well even after COVID so it seemed yes. very successful even yes. more so they're like damn and it was on HBO and Max yeah and people still watched it so you know um but yeah because uh Monarch is getting a second season as well anyways 
Godzilla and Kong are a thing. You know, Kong's down there and Hollow Earth. Which should be a lot more cooler than I think. Every time but I George, say, what if there was a more hollow word? <sighs> oh, we'll get to that. And Godzilla's up, and Rebecca Hall. I forgot Rebecca Hall was in that movie. And Rebecca Hall. I okay. I'm sorry. This haircut is awful. It's awful. What happened? What what happened to the game I loved? What have you? How can you massacre? I think she wanted to differentiate this. The, the the I'm making money on this movie, Rebecca Hall, and that this is a good movie. Or maybe Rebecca, Rebecca Hall. Hall just likes short hair now, and she she like I'm not fucking waiting to grow my hair out for this fucking movie. I'm not wearing a wig. Exactly. <laughs> so whatever. Um. Anyways, I forgot Rebecca Hall is in Godzilla vs Kong. Mm-hmm. She's here now. She's the only star. I, I'm sorry, Dan Stevens. I, I mean, I like you, but come on, man. You're not a star. Come on, man. <laughs> Everyone else is... Ken Watanabe, gone. Sally Hawkins, she got smushed by a fucking Damn, pole. Red, Millie that. Bobby Brown? No idea. I have no clue. Oh, I, every name that you're saying, mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, I don't remember There were so many all. celebrities in this movie. <laughs> None of them are here anymore. Anyways, Kong, he's got a toothache, and he's all... <laughs> He does. That's a he big. He does. That is the thing in this movie. He goes up to the up to the earth, and they they do that, and then Godzilla wakes up. He sleeps. He sleeps in the little coliseum in Rome, and that's very the best part cute, of this movie. Very cute. That's he's the like, best part. Thank you for building me a pet bed. Exactly. <laughs> and he wakes up, and he's all like, "Whoa, I heard something. What's going on?" And he goes out and investigates. Like, hey guys, Godzilla's moving. Um, and so they got to figure out what's going on with that. And so they're like, "Let's go to Hollow Earth, see what's going on." There's more monkeys down there, and the monkeys are fucking. <laughs> They're in there, George. Lanky Kong's down there. He's pissed. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. George, there's a little monkey. Carrie, you hate Planet of the Apes. Why do you like these and monkeys? Because they're silly. They're not self serious and being like, don't you care about the monkeys? They just don't talk. <laughs> they're just so fucking like, oh, I'm moving these rocks all day. Oh, yeah, it's die. funny. I don't want to watch a fucking boring ass. Oh, we have to build a civilization because we're the new humans and you care so much, don't you? I don't fucking care. How are you getting bossed around with this punk ass fucking orangutan? <laughs> what is wrong with you people? Monkeys. Listen, ape. George, let me be smooth brained for once, okay, sure, George? Okay. One time! How dare you! This is manufactured by fucking whatever the hell. And, okay. <laughs> I do not have a high opinion of this movie. Anyways. I mean, I just had a ton of fun with it, so I inflated my rating for, for goops. But, like. There is a part of this movie where you see and you can see Carrie address the rating up two more stars. <laughs> It's like this is just the this is just the carry rule. No choice of <laughs> Listen, I apologize. I am That's not fair. gonna continue to pretend to have good taste. I'm just gonna be myself. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie that this movie has I just some. Don't understand how this is the one you like the most out of all of these? No, I don't like this one the most out of all of them. Okay. I like Kong Skull Island the most. Out oh of my all god, of what a good <laughs> fucking movie! I'm sorry, Ryan, I interrupted you, but. That the other thing remember that we made a fucking good ass Kong movie mm-hmm. that looked visually stunning that had John C. Riley on it yeah, that, that had Tom movie. Hiddleston that had fucking creatures that were like skull heads and then look like fucking freaky as shit but what if instead we just made more monkeys what if we just made the quantum mania of Godzilla movies that's what this fucking is fuck this movie man <laughs> what happened to the game I loved everything look this movie has 50 million dollars less of a budget than the last Godzilla vs. Kong movie and boy can you tell because it looks like shit. I hate it looks so bad. Oh my god go ahead Ryan. No I'll say that that this movie has like some fun action moments with mostly Kong because it's mostly a Kong movie. It is a Kong movie. It is a Kong movie. I don't understand why Godzilla has first Godzilla. Yeah. Um and like he has some fun stuff but like the there's so much waiting and talking between that and not even just between people like reacting to like what they're seeing Kong do it's like Kong talking to other monkeys like that's fine I'm fine with that because then otherwise it would be what Carrie does not not like which is no like and like I get that but like it there's a lot of it (laughs) I mean I'm fine with that if I had any emotional stakes when you have so much of like Kong in like a big like underground world talking to other big apes it's like Oh yeah, these these guys are like bigger than like the Empire State Building. Like, there's no scale. That's anymore. true. 
Like Quantum Mania. Like Quantum Mania. There's <laughs> zero scale in this movie because for the most part, they're just underground and like when they do go above ground it doesn't matter because they flatten the city immediately so it's like okay they're just big monsters and like that's what's fun about a monster movie and that's the best part of the movie yeah when they get to the end yeah but like in a monster movie the best part is like seeing these the big, scale these yeah big towering things and the scale and you know fucking cloverfield destroying the bridge and fucking godzilla destroying tokyo and it's already destroyed that's great. In this one, it's just CGI fights around nothing, um, which takes away a lot of that. Um, and this movie made more than Godzilla vs. Kong, I think. That is that is a big shame. What is wrong with you people? Oh my god. I can't And plus, this movie. like, some of the... Lo- and, like, this movie goes hard on, like, trying to make more lore for, like, Godzilla Nobody and, like, stuff. Nobody fucking cares! No this cares. movie doesn't give a shit! Rebecca Hall goes into this fucking tomb and suddenly she knows all the history all the story uh, no she was just looking at the things on the wall george it was all why there. rebecca hall <laughs> seeing this movie i would think rebecca hall is one of the worst actresses ever and that's a shame because i fucking love rebecca hall but the problem is that she is acting she's trying why are you trying? <laughs> Stop trying. No one else is trying. You cannot so, make this So when she work. talks, no. it feels like every line she says, it's like for a trailer. Like, it doesn't feel yeah. like dialogue. It feels like stuff from a trailer. It was prophesied that the Godzilla came and Mothra would come back. And why is why bring Mothra in this bullshit? Mothra didn't do anything how wrong. Did, how did why they, is, I'm so confused how Mothra... Did they make a new Mothra? Yes, they're, it rebirthed. That's fine. I, I'm fine with that part. But like how? It just rebirthed. You know, Mothra's forever. It's a, Mothra, uh, Mothra's I forever. Know, I, know, <laughs> I know, but like how? That's how fine. did they do that? That's fine. Mothra's forever. How That's did they fine. just like, 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 daughter, do the ancient chant, Mothra! I'm fine with And Mothra with appears. Like, Okay, well, they whatever. didn't sing. And they usually sing. They have that a little song. Tr- I, I know, but like they can't just start like randomly like start. I like, was fine with that. Part. Do some Godzilla. for the record. <laughs> when, when they pull from like Godzilla and Toho lore like loosely, it's like you know you don't. Okay, that's this. fair. Also, it you is don't very deserve like... this when you are trying to do your own like we're gonna make our own King Kong lore. There's no fucking King Kong lore. The movie is. Oh yeah, what happened to Skull Island? Oh, that was like a really bad. St- Storm, don't no worry. Don't no worry there. about it. Back. It sucks. Uh, it what is, happened to that director? What happened to John Voight Roberts, whatever his name is? I think he started ma- working on a Metal Gear movie. And now he's in hell forever? And now he's in a hell limbo for that because <laughs> he, he wanted to do that, yeah. which, you know, sucks. But listen, he'll be he'll be free. I love him reacting to, like, negative reviews of Cogstool Island. Have you seen these? No, I have not. He... He did a breakdown of the cinema sins oh. of it, like on Twitter, and it was like, I don't normally do this because, like, I know these are for fun, but they, people do not take these for fun. And here is yes, why: true, yes. so many of their things they call sins are actually just nonsense for people who don't understand how making a film works. And it's an insane thread, and it is absolutely incredible. I would well, highly recommend good. reading that. Anyways, take. Godzilla out of the hands of Adam Wingard. I'm sorry that I had your next on my top four for so long. It was, I. That's, that's okay. Things change. Shout out to Dan Stevens, though. I like him. He's something. He's in something else coming up. I don't remember. Abigail. What. Yes, he's in Abigail. Yes. Oh. I like him. Speaking of Abigail, that's not the next on our list. But that is a movie that's coming out in April, right? Yeah. No, but we won't. Ta- we can't talk about that. The first omen. We have seen the first omen. We will try to keep the passion of the first omen alive until the next episode. But- <laughs> I'm thinking that won't be too difficult. <laughs> it is a good movie that you should watch right now because I feel like it's gonna bomb, and yeah, that sucks. It. I told my coworker to watch it because he was telling me that him and his daughter like to watch horror movies, and I w- I had talked to him about it before I was gonna go, and then I saw him again for the first time today, and I was like, I saw it and it was amazing. <laughs> I told him about. Uh, another movie that this movie pays homage to and he hadn't heard of that and I was like you gotta fucking watch that movie so I ended up recommending that movie to a co-worker today so we'll have to report back um side note to the first omen and relating to possession Mm -hmm. and relating to Sam Neill who was in possession I saw the omen 3 that movie sucks don't watch that. That's a nothing movie. But George, I already bought it on DVD. Well, you know, it's got some moments, but uh, it's not. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna watch it. Th- that, that's what was so weird about, like, you know, them announcing an Omen prequel in the year 2024. Is 
you know, the Omen had this weird history of like, you know, the first one people like, but then after that, no one no really cared, liked no. the other ones. And then there was the 2000s remake, which I think no one, I mean. I, no one really saw it. It was just a fun gimmick. It was like 666. Yeah. yeah. So like, it felt like, like, oh, an <clears throat> Omen prequel. Okay. And then let's just say you're going to want to hear us talk about this let's movie next month. Let's just say that I saw a screen cap of the Super Mario Brothers movie, like the old one. And I thought that was a screenshot from the first Omen. <laughs> and there's a moment where you see Yoshi, the Yoshi egg. Okay. I thought that was the first Omen, but it was just the Yoshi that's, egg. That's fair. That's fair. I respect that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Monkey Man. We haven't seen Monkey Man. Uh, we we tried, but things did not work out. Uh, this um, is Dev Patel's uh, directorial debut. Uh, no, maybe not, actually. But this is a big, big swing from him, starring... And directed by him. Mm -hmm. Action movie. Mm -hmm. Looks cool. Produced by uh, Jordan Peele's Monkey Paw Productions. Yes. Seems great. Um, seems awesome. Yeah. I want to watch it eventually. I want to watch it. Yeah. The Beast. What, what is this again? This I is... I can't remember. This is Leah Seydoux. Yes, what it is. Yes. Oh. oh. This looks well, good. I'll be there. She's like on a, on a journey in through like some sort of VR AI thing mm -hmm. to clean up her literal past lives. Like mm. she goes through... Her. And then she gets ca captured in a tower by a monster. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some, there's this dude who keeps showing up in all of her other lives. And there's yeah, some intrigue. It looks really good. <laughs> but that seems like you're either going to catch a streaming or maybe at the Root right. Circle of yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I heard this movie was very good. <clears throat> it seems good, yeah. And you made a Beauty and the Beast joke, but did you know, Ryan, they said it was in a Beauty and the Beast. Movie. She was. Did you know who else was in a Beauty and the Beast? Uh, Dan Stevens was the Beast. Oh, and which yeah. one? The live action one. What live action one? The one with fucking Hermione. Oh, really? <laughs> I for Josh Gad. He's I, a gay. I, I genuinely forgot that movie came out. God, I wish I was you. <laughs> Until you said live action, I was like, oh! Yeah, that movie's cool back. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> although, I, although I know there's been a bunch of live action Beauty and the Beast it's stuff because it's a, a public a, domain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, that one. Yeah. But anyways, yes, yeah, she was in the a, reason one that bl that blue ass. Yes, <laughs> she was in a French Beauty and the Beast directed by the guy who did Silent Hill and The Brotherhood of the Wolf. Huh. <laughs> cool. <laughs> anyway. I'll be looking into that. <laughs> uh, Civil War. Um, the next movie by you think it'd be called Civil War Two? Because <laughs> we've already had one. You know, no. that's so fucking true, right? <laughs> that was def God. that was definitely a, a marketing decision. They went did back have and, a civil war back and yeah. forth. Yeah. Um, on God, on God, we did have no, one. See, he's gonna make a prequel called the First Civil War. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> um. So yes, this is the next movie by Alex. Spoiler Gar alert! I know who won that one. The next movie by Alex Garland, who is a. Uh, been put in uh, director jail ever since we men, I feel. <laughs> I put him in, like, he made two movies that I absolutely love, and then he yeah. made men, and I was like, oof. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so. How, what are our thoughts on men now? Because I, not good. Seen, not I good haven't film. seen it since then, and I no, think yeah, I want to rewatch it, but. I don't think I would gain anything new from that yeah, movie. Yeah, I mean, either. I don't think so either. I My thoughts on men are Jesse Buckley, good. Yes. That is true. Uh, the effects in the birth sequence still cool. Overall movie dumb. She's yeah. gonna be in that um, Frankenstein movie from oh. Maggie Gyllenhaal, um, which that'll be fun. And they posted a photo of Christian Bale as the monster, and he looked like Suicide Squad Jared Leto. I was like, ooh. <laughs> now we're talking. All right. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> We'll see. Isn't Jesse Buckley also in something else coming up? I saw her in something. I She's thought. in a movie that's out right now called Wicked Little Letters. Yes, with that her movie. And Olivia Coleman, which, yeah, Olivia I knew, Coleman, which my yes. mom went to see, and I'm like, I want to see that real bad. So me and my mom might go see that in the coming nice. weeks. Okay, I hope it's good. I just saw her. Yeah, it I was it like, it's really middling, cool. but we'll see. Um, Civil War. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea how this is going to land, but uh, I have we'll no see. idea. We'll see how this goes. We might see it tonight. Maybe it's late now, so probably oh, not. No. We'll see. Damn it. Sting! What's Sting? It's a spider it's movie. It's a spider movie. Mm. Spooky a mean, spiders. A mean spider. A spider who's not nice. But like... Like in a mean way. Oh, okay. Like he's mean. He's not nice. I'm about to look like up... Like he would go out of his way to hurt you. I would assume. <laughs> I've only seen the poster, which is, <laughs> which is a lady in bed and like a big spider behind her. 
us. What is this Netflix bullshit? What is this? Uh, well, I will tell you. It's a movie about after raising an unner- unnervingly talented spider in secret, 12-year-old Charlotte must face the truth about her pet and fight for her family's survival. Heard that it's bad. This but seems oh. bad. <laughs> but, but I put it on the list because I was like, I've heard of that. <laughs> okay. Well, that seems nice. That's something. Stay. <laughs> spider. Squad Sunset, a movie y'all have already seen. It's yeah, true. we saw an early screen of it. Bizarre watching that movie with the full audience, <laughs> but you know. But yeah, it's just a movie about some Sasquatches um, moving through the Pacific Northwest, I assume, and trying I mean, to where they would trying to go. look for more Sasquatches. Uh, the People's Joker. I am so excited for this movie. I don't know anything about it other than it. Sure, it looks so. Sure. This was a Kickstarter movie yeah. to make like a like a Joker parody movie, written directed by um, a trans woman. Um, and from my understanding, it's supposed to like reappropriate that Joker like origin to like mirror um, th- this woman's story in her life. So very cool. It showed one time at like a film festival until Warner Brothers like shut it down. Oh. Um, and. And now, you know, they found a distributor and they're saying the fully legal, the legal parody, I think, is in the, is in like mm. the header now um, for this movie. And I'm, I've heard it's crazy and wild and very good. Um, and I'm excited for it. We got to have at least one good Joker movie this year. Mm-mm. Abigail. I'm gonna be real with Let's you. Let's fucking go. I'm sure it's fine. I'm tired of this trailer. Mm, that's fair. But I'm sure it's fun. It's gonna uh, be a fun movie. Um, it's got uh, Lisa Frankenstein in it. <laughs> it's directed by the Ready, Ready or Not and not. Scream people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a vampire ballerina. Looks silly. Uh, looks looks looks, looks fun. Good. Looks pretty good. So yeah, now we'll see how that goes. Speaking of trailers, I'm fucking tired of Christ a lot. Again, it feels like a fake movie. The this man is of a parody of himself. War, I hate this warfare. trailer so much. The thing I hate the most about this trailer is I feel like the direction that Henry Cavill was given was to be, like, someone told him just, like, you know, go crazy, go wild, and all he can think to do is, like, wave his tongue around, and I'm yeah. like, God, you're so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't hate Henry Cavill, but Henry Cavill, post-Argyle, and now in this trailer, I'm like, It's, it's difficult. It's difficult. <laughs> but yeah, this is a... Uh... This is just a parody of a Guy Ritchie movie, I feel. Because uh, his movies are all about spies and being a little little different. <laughs> and again, having the most long-ass name, like, again, Operation Fortune, Ruse or fucking whatever the shit. Ruse de Guerrero or The Gentleman. I don't know. I don't like Guy Ritchie because his movies are all the same now. Mm. Um, anyways. Uh, Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Boo! Next! Uh, <laughs> you say that like you're not gonna go home and watch it. Yeah, I'll, wa- I'll watch it eventually, but <laughs> boo! I'm excited. <laughs> Challengers is finally coming out yes. in April. The Luca Guadagino's uh, movie about uh, th- th- three tennis players in a weird triangle of... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Um, I'm excited. Looks like it's gonna be fun. Looks fun. Looks like something. Yeah. Luca, uh-huh. Luca makes good movies. He does make good movies. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's uh, that's, that's that's April. He'll finally make people like tennis. Mm-mm-mm. It's about time. Finally. Uh, another. Someone noticed that it was like, oh, Mary Jane, the actress, did the tennis movie after Spider Man. That was a thing someone noticed. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess. Oh yeah, because Emma. Yeah. Oh. The Emma basis of sex. That, yeah. Which is a movie I forget existed. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Ryan Lance. Whoa. That's Where mean. can people find your opinion about Guy Ritchie movie? Uh, you will not find that anywhere on the internet, <laughs> probably. Cause... Of Rock and Roll and Aladdin, a movie I forgot Guy Ritchie directed. Oh, oh yeah, what about right. King Arthur, Legend of the that's Soul? That's so true. He did do I that. do have opinions on that movie. <laughs> um, and it on Blu-ray and digital somehow. Not somehow. <laughs> Carrie did this to me. You're welcome. <laughs> It's a curse, and I'm and I'm and I'm physically unable to give the Blu-ray to other people. It keeps appearing back in my possession. The people I give it to disappear mysteriously. So I stopped doing that. But if you go to letterboxcom filmpiece, that is me. That is where I put thoughts and feelings 
on films that I watch. Mm-hmm, Carrie. Excellent. Breaking new ground on Letterboxd. I know, right? <laughs> Someone finally did it. Someone finally posted you, the reviews on Letterboxd. You can find me on Letterboxd just by searching my first name, Carrie, K-A-R-R-I-E. You can find me at jcruzalvarez26. Um, I've been watching a lot of movies lately. Yeah, me neither. I've been in kind of a, I've been in a movie slump. I've been in a book slump. Mm. Goodreads keeps yelling at me and being like, you're six books behind schedule. And uh... I'm like, I'm going to shoot myself with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Is it is good Goodreads uh, turning into Duolingo a little bit? Where no, like... it doesn't like hound me. Okay. And I don't have a I don't have a widget. Mm. <laughs> but uh, but every time I go on Goodreads and look at my little challenge that I set for myself, it it it, it it's it's hurtful because it doesn't have any condescension. It's just matter of factly letting me know that I'm six books behind schedule. And I'm like, great, this thanks. Just letting you know. Thanks All right, bye. <laughs> The greatest enemy is yourself. I know, right? <laughs> uh, well, until next time. <laughs> <laughs>